Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we're going to pick up on probably the most important topic in the game. How do you maximize your champions efficiently, effectively? And we're going to look at that through the lens of an early game player, a mid game player, and a late game player, because it completely changes depending on where you are in the game. Uh, I'm also going to talk you through kind of making the decisions to level those champions and to max them out. I'm going to talk you through when I decide to book a champion or when I don't and, and how I go about doing that. I'm going to talk through masteries, ascension, all of that stuff. So this is going to be an end-to-end -end, taking a champion, deciding who you're going to six-star next, and then working through where should I level them up, where should I get my experience, and um, how should I make sure that I get them ready as quickly and efficiently as possible. So for me, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight a champion that I'm going to level up. I've got a massive account, so ignore the fact that I've got a crazy account, and let's pretend that I'm the average person. Um, so what am I looking for? I'm looking in my roster to say, do I have particular gaps that I need to fill? Okay, so for most teams in kind of dungeon content, faction wars, um, clan boss, it doesn't really matter where it is. You need a champion that can drop defense. You need a champion that can boost your speed. You need a champion that can come in and do some damage. Uh, you need champions that can lay debuffs. And you need champions that pr can protect your team. Okay, so when you're considering who to six star next, you should be looking across that roster and saying, where's my gap? Where's my gap in those kind of really important roles? If you're early game, new to this game, you probably should be going, bam, get my campaign farmer done first. Hopefully we're already at that point. So, and normally for, for general players, it's going to be a starter champion. Big AoE hitters that are kind of top tier really for rares. They're, they're really strong champions. Um, past that, Generally, what you want to do is look at your clan boss team and start to upgrade your clan boss team. But ideally, picking champions that can do a few different roles. So for me, my next champion I'm going to upgrade is actually going to be Dagger from the Banner Lords. So why is that? Firstly, I want to do a guide on this champion. She is absolutely sweet as a rare, one of the better rares in the game. So I want to do a guide on her. So, she, so for me, she's for, uh, fulfilling a purpose. Um, but... For you guys, what would you be looking at for Dagger? You'd be looking at Dagger and saying, well, she's got this ability here on her A2, which has got a uh, look, 25, so it becomes a 75% chance to drop defense on the whole enemy team. So other than a uh, couple of rares, that's one of the strongest abilities in the game for this skill. Um, and she's also got some pretty cool other abilities as well. So Dagger's going to be the one that I'm going to work on. But for me... I'm seeing her as a gap in my faction war team, a drop defense champion, which is really important. And she also brings decreased attack, which is really important skill. So for me, she's just going to be a good utility champion that I can bring in. So one of the other things you just need to take into account before you decide on that champion that you're going to use is, do they need books to be good? So on my website, um, I try and help people with this. I'm not saying I've always got the perfect answer, but on my website, if you go into, so this is hellhades.com, I will link it below. If you go into champion tier list, and if we were to look for dagger that we're going to level up here, basically what I have is a bit of a guide around how much value do you get from books. So this is saying that actually it's an 8 out of 10. It's going to be a really strong improvement to this champion if you get books on this champion. Uh, I also just kind of give an overall rating and I, I try and give a steer for where I think they're going to be useful. And this is in, probably more important to look at where do I think they're useful than what's their overall rating. Because what you can do is you can say, well, I do need someone that's going to help me in Spider, Ice Golem and Faction Wars. Okay, this champion feels good. If you've already got those things covered and you're looking to improve Fire Knight, then the overall rating really means nothing. All you want to look at is Fire Knight. Are they good or not? Yeah. It's also situational because this champion is going to be good because she drops defense. If you've already got someone doing that, then you don't need to bring this champion in to do it. So you need to use your own brain to think, what do I need for the area that I'm looking for? Okay. Now, the next thing is looking at where the book priority is so i get a good book value 
The book priority is telling me I would love books in the A2 and A3. There's no mention of A1. Okay. So if we look at this champion, let's just have a look at the skills. A1, double hitter. All I get from my books is extra damage. Okay. So for some champions, you might, if they're going to be your damage dealer, then yeah, you might want to book this A1 for the extra damage. Stagger is not going to be a damage dealer for me. She's going to be here to drop defense and she's going to be here to give me a chance to drop attack on a single target. Which means that I want to improve the debuff chance here. See this? 25% more chance. I want that. 25% more chance. I want that. And I actually really want the cooldown on the decreased defense. Way more than I want the cooldown on the decreased attack. I can't choose where the books are going to go. I wish I could. I cannot choose that. For rares, I mean, I've got a billion books in rares. I've been playing the game for forever. For, for a new player, you don't have a billion books. So what I would do is I want decreased defense. So I know I'm going to need to use at least six books. So I'm going to throw six books in there if I've got them. And we're going to use them. We're going to see where these books go. <laughs> now, <laughs> the books have all gone into my A2. For you, if you're booking Dagger right now, you probably stop. That is the single main reason you play with Dagger is for decreased defense. Okay, in my on my uh, website, I said the A3 is pretty useful as well. So for someone who's got plenty of books, you would then say, well, the second best skill is this A3. I'm going to try and book the A3 as well, which is another six books. So I might as well throw six books in because I no, well no sorry, I don't care about this cooldown though. I don't care about the cooldown on this one. So I actually maximum potential. If I'm super lucky, I'm going to put five books in and land all five books here. But it's random. So we'll see. Literally, I've never had this happen to me in my life. But all of the books have gone where I want them to go. <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? So at this point, I stop. I don't care about the damage here. I don't need the cooldown here. I've got my cooldown here. I stop booking. But it's really important to know what you want before you start doing that. So that if you do get super lucky like I've just got, you can get to the point where you say, stop. We're going to move on now. I don't need any more books in this champion. Save my books for the rest of the champions. Depending on where you are in the game, you now need to make decisions. So you need to make decisions about where am I going to farm my experience for this champion. Um, the first place that I would suggest, if you're earlier game, newer player, then you should be in campaign. And a lot of people will say to you, go to 12-3 campaign. It's a really good piece of advice if you're just looking for good level of experience and some nice silver coming in. It's a really good piece of advice. So you come into 12-3. Why 12-3, not 12-6? Or well, 12 free will drop shields. Shields give you more silver than any other type of item in the game. And you won't want to keep any of this gear here. So you farm 12 free because you're just going to sell off these shields, make a bunch of silver, and you're going to level up your champs. Yeah, so you can see I've been leveling up champs here. So I'd, I'd throw them in. I'd have my campaign farmer at the front. We'd have my food champions in the back. And what you want to do is always have three lots of food champions in your team so just on that point of food and making sure you select food champs try when when you're uh, farming campaign you're going to be collecting up mystery shards okay you get mystery shards a lot of the time depending on how many you've got and how you're doing i would always recommend buying mystery shards when you see them in the market and opening them up for more food i would also suggest it's pretty good economy to actually buy the um, the uncommons. The uncommons, if your silver farm is going pretty well, buying the uncommons that you're going to use as food. Because too often I see people leveling epics and rares that, that they want to use. They level them up as food and then realize they've got no one who's actually a food champion to go into the champion that they're, they're trying to grow. So really important. Collect up your shards, buy them from the market, and it will help you with the kind of phase of growing your food. So you're probably thinking, why three and not just one? You have three because what happens is there's always a set amount of experience that is split between all champions, even someone who's max level. 
So if you've got three food champions, what happens is you take the 100% amount of experience and you split it 25, 25, 25, 25. If you just placed one champion in, just dagger, she would level up faster because she would get a 50% split of the whole number, the whole amount of experience. But you'd be wasting a ton of extra experience on the guy that doesn't need to level at all. So in this instance, we're better off going with three food champions, one of which is the one that you're really wanting to concentrate on. At this point, I'd also suggest to you, don't put the other two food champions in as people that you want to use if you need to grind food. Loads of people make this mistake. Put the other two food champions as people that are going to help you maximize the, pe the person you actually want to use. So putting in two um, rubbish champions, these are just pure food. You're going to level these up to 30, level them up to 40. They're going to end up being your chickens. Yeah, so many people make the mistake of putting three champions that they want to level in here, but they're not growing any food to actually maximize the potential of the one you really want. OK, so you'd run this through 12-3 with your fastest campaign farmer. L lucky for me, I've got somebody who just smacks his way through this. And you'll see once we get it done. That the experience is shared equally 8,652 across the board and you don't see it here. But Ethos also got 8652, same amount of experience. We've got a shield that we can sell, and then we move on and we level up in that way. That's a good place to farm. But if you are super early game, if you are early game and you do not have yet yourself some speed boots, you do not have yourself any lifesteal chests with defense percentage as their main stat, you do not have yourself any lifesteal crit rate gloves or defense percentage gloves to help you in clan boss, then I'll tell you where you should be. You should be farming here. Brutal still. So brutal, exactly the same. You'll get less experience per turn. But you will earn items that you'll actually keep. So you're farming not just experience at this point. You're also farming gear. And gear is really important. So see this. We've got, what, 1,400 less experience per champion. So it's quite a lot less. We've lost um, you know, a decent chunk. And these gloves are pretty crap but you can get five star gloves here you can get five star gloves that are rare uh, sorry not rare that are uncommon with a substat on when i start a new account this is where i farm now once you've got yourself a set of speed boots and you've got yourself some some gloves and chests what you can then do is upgrade yourself to the, to the boss fight so you start fighting the boss and the boss can drop rare items okay but you don't want to get yourself into dragon or spider or anywhere like that for a while. Yeah, because you want to be just farming as much food as you can, as quickly as you can, and looking for drops that can help your account, not like this one. So this is where I would suggest that any early game player, once you get yourself this far in campaign to brutal, just find yourself the speed um, speed boss here, stage 12, 7, uh, sorry, 6, 7, and the life still boss here, stage six, uh, eight, seven. They're going to be the two places that you spend most of your first month playing the game in to get yourself some items that you can actually go out and fight some of this other content with some sort of confidence. Okay, so that's that's a kind of early to mid game player. Now, when you get into the mid game, you actually want to start using your energy more efficiently. So at this point, we're hoping you've already got two or three 60s, maybe four 60s. And now what you're trying to do is get efficiency out of your energy. So what you can do is you can come into a keep. And you can use your champions that can destroy the keep. Now, you should be able to destroy a level 15 keep with three or four champions when you get to like mid game. So what you then do is you pile in for the rest of the spots food champions one is the one that you're trying to concentrate on and then if you've got more space you throw in another couple but ultimately you want to bring as much food into this environment even if it takes you twice as long to do the dungeon doesn't matter doesn't matter leave it running overnight um, get the most efficiency out of your squads rather than trying to do it as quickly as you can there's no point what's the point in you doing it another three seconds quicker when you could slow it down by 30 seconds and get yourself 
half the experience we were just getting from campaign but I'm also now collecting potions and you're going to need potions to ascend your champion and ascending the champion is huge because it means you'll be able to put jewelry items on them so you want to be running through here collect the experience as you go don't worry if everyone dies they still get the same experience it makes no difference um, and you just work your way through with your champions um, getting their, their experience as you go and as you can see here they're all dead again doesn't matter at all couldn't care less and we're going to blow them up in 20 odd seconds for me it might be two minutes for you it might be five minutes for you doesn't even matter set it running auto overnight if you need to but get your experience coming in so i would suggest you actually pick a, a different keep um, and use you know probably a third or half your energy every day just farming potions to keep you a good stock of potions because when it comes to a fusion or a fragment event you're going to be wanting those potions hard like you're going to need them to get the job done and a lot of people lack the potions they don't do the work up front they leave it all to the end and then they realize that they're having to blow tons of gems tons of resources to get those fusions so it kills two birds with one stone you're gaining experience and you are gaining the pots you need to level people up ascend people so the other thing that i do and i do this personally with every single champion that i level 100 percent of the time i use energy to farm my um my scrolls i i use to be fair i use quite a lot of gems to boost my energy because i'm i'm trying to level people up as quick as possible but i will use energy to farm scrolls not just buy scrolls with gems only do that for like your first two champions after that get yourself into the minotaur and be farming level 15. why do i do that you see here i've got a team that can farm easily i put in my food champion again um, again if you can afford to put in a couple whatever you can do to clear stage 15 but probably most of you maybe can only do it with one food champion and uh, i'm fortunate again that i could probably do it with three probably maybe four i could probably do it with four but what are you doing here now now in this instance though you need to be a bit more clever so i've just been completely dumb by putting in two food champions that i'm not going to keep i don't want to share the scrolls with people i don't want to keep only put into these fights people that are long-term investments that you want to get scrolls in and it might be that for your faction war team that you actually want to get scrolls in everybody on your faction war team at least until they get like stage two or stage three masteries so that's a really good kind of strategy but you don't need to um get everyone to tier six unless you are thinking to do um unless you're thinking to take them up and use them in a lot of content that's when you want tier six but you actually don't need tier six for a lot of champions so i'm really lucky my scrolls actually did go into dagger here and all of these champions got some experience but all you really want to do take these two stupid champions out i mean to do that you take the two stupid champions out and you just keep in here people that you're going to be using long term so if i was to do this with two more food champions i'd be looking at two champions that i'm absolutely going to want to invest in and get myself some some masteries on longer term okay but minotaur so if you take someone who's already got up to six star and you only farm them let, let's say i could do it just with these three champions which i can if i just did this for minotaur it would be the most efficient way for me to get my scrolls and to level up this champion so if she was already a six star and i was farming scrolls on her she would be about level 40 by the time i got enough scrolls so it's about 2000 energy there or thereabouts a little bit more um so you've taken someone from level one to 40 just by getting their scrolls which you're going to have to do anyway if you throw in the uh, ascension pots and that as well you probably got them to like 45 50 and by that point you just got to finish off the job so this is a really good effective way to get your um your experience whilst also doing another job efficiency of energy when you get to late game what you might actually want to do is try and gain your items whilst you're also farming your food yeah so i mean a 
very end game players will just use one champion potentially, but most players will need to bring in, you know, perhaps three or four champions and their one food champion. So you come into Dragon, which is where you want to be spending a lot of your time. For most players, you'll be spending a lot of time here. And um, let's just pick a team that's actually going to do this. So you want to spend a lot of your time in Dragon anyway, farming for speed deer, accuracy deer mainly. And um, this is a good place to come. So if you've got some champions that can do the job for you, and you don't, again, you don't need to be fast at this. You can farm this stuff overnight. You can literally go and make yourself some lunch, come back and, and have farmed, you know, four, five, six times. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how long it takes you. You just want the efficiency of getting your experience whilst you're farming items. So this is very much an end game strategy, depending on how strong you are, basically. How strong is your team? Can you kill this dragon with four people? Even if it takes you twice the amount of time, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Unless you're going for some sort of world record runs, who cares how long it takes? Let it run through. Get yourself some extra experience on your champions for the energy you're using. Every time you don't do that, you're wasting more gems to refill your energy or you're waiting for time. So if you do it quickly, great. What are you doing for the rest of your day? What are you doing? Probably sitting there hoping your energy's done a refresh. So just let this run, use it efficiently, and what you'll do is you'll gain experience at the same time as leveling your champs. I'll throw this to the end, then we'll see what sort of experience we get. Okay, so job is done. We've still got our item. So we've still gained experience. Now, the, the experience still spreads between everyone in the, the dungeon. So it's way less experience here, but we're still gaining experience for energy usage which is cool. Uh, and it's taken me probably twice the amount of time that I'd normally take to farm the, the dungeon. And I might get an, a piece here that's actually worth keeping, potentially. Who knows? Um, once in a while, it happens, trust me. Now and then. You might do the same as well. It's harder. It's much harder. But you might do the same as well for finite or for spiders, if you've got a team that can do those things. But they're much harder dungeons. And I'd suggest I would focus my efforts on trying to get Dragon to work. Uh, to do that okay so we got to the point where we know where to farm now we need to decide about ascending our champion okay so for dagger we're going to ascend dagger up there's a really important couple of things that you need to decide so when you're ascending generally if you're going to use this champion throughout your teams you want to ascend them to six star it means you can equip an amulet you can equip a banner but if you do not own a banner for this champion yet save your your potions and stuff until you get one there's no point in making them six star well there's a tiny point in making them six star but you'll gain a few more base stats you won't be able to use a banner that you don't own if you don't own an amulet don't even take them to five star yet what is the point you don't own the piece that you're going to equip so again you need to look at your items and decide what are you going to do there's something else that's really important as well in champions Almost all of them now have got an upgrade at level 3 of Ascension. So in this champion, the skill here is at level 3, I unlock, see it's locked, I unlock an aura. I don't particularly care about this aura. So if I don't own a ring, an amulet or a banner, there's actually really little point in me ascending her at all, apart from I gain a few base stats. There's some champions, uh, let's hope I've got one actually. I think I've got, have I got a Skull Crown? Yeah, okay. Skull Crown's a really good example. Always check this before you start ascending. Skull Crown is a great example. All, actually, you want to check this before you even start booking. So with Skull Crown, at level four, I unlock a new ability completely, which has also got cooldowns. So for Skull Crown, um, I unlock ability that she will revive when Sinesh is on the same team. And I can book that down two more turns. So if she's not ascended yet to level four, books cannot land there. It's impossible. They won't possibly land there. So always check this before you start booking a champion or always check this before you start ascending a champion because there's certain skills that you don't want books to land in and you might save yourself a couple of books from doing it. So it's a really good kind of little tip. So guys, look, I hope that's been helpful. Um, Obviously, it depends where you are in the game. 
Uh, always try and push efficiency through the roof. This game is about efficiency. It's about silver collection. It's about using your energy in the right way. It's about collecting items that are relevant to you where you are in the game. It's about selecting the right champions to do a job for you. It's not about checking the tier list and saying who's top of the tier list. If you end up picking up four damage dealers or four team protectors and you end up with a team that can't actually function, it means nothing. This game is about team synergy and it's about making sensible decisions with your roster. Um, and I would challenge like any roster, even if it's, if it's full of rares, can do any content in the game if you pick the right team synergy. So a lot of it is about the first decision you make right at the start, which champion you're going to level. But I hope the rest of those kind of pointers, tips will help you along the way to, um, to improving your account.